Good evening and welcome to our Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting, January 14th, 2019, 6 p.m. here at the municipal offices. Uh, just to remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, the first item, or the item on our agenda we're going to be discussing tonight is wastewater system assessment update uh, with Mr. David Prickett and Associates. Um, I, the only thing I'd like to say before is that, you know, so we can have a, a good um, meeting where everybody can uh, hear everything. Uh, anybody who'd like to speak, just please raise your hand and uh, you'll be recognized and we'll uh, go in an orderly fashion and try not to have too many people talking at the same time, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and please use the microphones. There's oh, one yeah. standing there and please come up to the table if you have questions. Right. Uh, the first thing that I want to do before we, we or maybe uh, Dave can, can address this also, is I just want to have an update on that non-compliance um, notice that we got from DEP about the plant. There were five items on it, and I spoke to Kevin about some of them, t most of them today, but I, I just wanted to have a, some sort of a, a response to them. Um, I'm not sure who's best, is it Keith, or to deal with that? Well, I think we, we do definitely capture it in, in all the presentation tonight, but if there's, I don't know if there's anything, if you want to go through those one by one, we could do that. Yeah, or just real quick. Also, uh, yeah, come on up. Um, yeah, thank you. And introduce yourselves for the public, please. Dave Prickett with uh, DPC Engineering, joined by Tony D. Simone, also with DPC, and Kevin Scarborough, Highway Superintendent. Thank you, guys. Welcome. Okay. Okay. Wow. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Just speak loudly so that everybody in the room can hear. I, I was just wondering if anybody knows, was this an annual inspection or was this a random thing or were they summonsed? Or I, how did this come about? I'm just curious. <laughs> It, uh, they do it every uh, two or three years. They come around to the final. So, would you say that it's a random? Ex I mean, semi-random. That not random. No, it was called in advance that it was not. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, well, the, the first, the first item there, they, they said that they hadn't received these alarm reports and stuff um, that's called for. Can you guys shed any light on that or? Yeah, why don't you come up? Yeah, come, you can come up here, Keith. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Chair and screw over to the side until Keith's done. Oh, okay. Hello, uh, uh, Keith Mellon, Chief Operator. Uh, to answer your question, uh, the alarm reports and all the things he said he had not received, they were in his email inbox from January of that year. He, at EDEP, the inspector was brand new. He had never been a uh, wastewater inspector before, John Boussier. This was like one of his first inspections. And he was not aware that we were mandated to start using EDEP, the online portal for uploading documents to. So he was looking in for paper. Uh, I see. And it was all there already. It was all there. Okay. And I explained it and pointed them to it and okay. resent them to him directly to his email. In, in situations like this, because I'm, I'm kind of new to this, I mean, do we get any response from them, uh, I guess, uh, recognizing that? It was their error. Yeah, <laughs> misjudgment or something. I don't know what is typically done in that case like that. Probably not. I mean, historically, once the items uh, are addressed that are on the checklist, there usually isn't a follow-up correspondence. I mean, okay. you generally only get follow-up correspondence if you don't address something that's on the list. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, just going, for, well, going forward, what would you recommend the community do to document these types of things? Uh, it would, do you think it would be sufficient for Keith to uh, reply to the board in an email saying you know, what he basically just said? You know, because if a I replied to in, Kevin already. About yeah. it. Okay. Well, yeah, I know. Yeah. When it first happened. Okay. All right. On a Saturday. Pardon me? Okay. On a Saturday. On a Saturday. On a Saturday. <laughs> on a Saturday. <laughs> I took care of the whole thing on a Saturday. Yeah, thank you for that, Keith. I mean, operationally, you're absolutely meeting your standard of care with how Keith handles business at the two plants. Um, internally, those are kind of just how you want to do business in Deerfield. But um, listen, these, these things come up. You're, it's not okay. unique to uh, Deerfield. I 
would generally believe that every time an inspection occurs at any facility, yep. there's almost always some written follow-up of some level or another. And oftentimes they are, I don't want to say trivial, but a lot of the items can be quickly addressed just by communication. Sure. Yeah. Right. And, and I, I would just... I was just wondering what kind of documentation for you know the people who sit up here down the road and stuff like that. Uh, Eric, you have a question? No, I just, in regards to the documentation, you received a letter from the DEP, regardless of whether or not you had submitted it or not, you need to follow up with a response letter to them saying that you submitted it line item by line item. Just as a follow up, that's the documentation you would do. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Um, the, the next item, I think we were aware of this was the uh, the arm on the secondary clarifier. Um, what's the status of that? So that's why we're here. That's yeah. why we're here. Yep. Just primarily in that one. Yeah. That's okay. where phase 1A comes into play. The um, the inspection at the Captain Lathrop pump station, uh, like you said earlier, that's that whole project has been completed. And that is correct. That, uh, what the problem was at that point in time was all we had was a light flashing on the top, and he. Uh, the inspector basically informed me that that is not sufficient and it has to be either a radio or a telephone or some type of communication that will actually speak to a person. Presently what we have right now is it's a, uh, they call it a mission system and when there's an issue there it will start calling four people and it will call one person if nobody answers it goes to the second person to the third person to the fourth person back to the first person. And it's going to keep right on doing that until somebody picks up. Okay. Okay. Good. Great. Um, and that has been completed. Yes, I know. Um, same thing with the department and they're not receiving the sledge reports. Same type of reporting thing. You did it online, and they were. Yeah, this year it. I've already done this year's, and, and this time I also followed up with an uh, email direct to Mr. Boussier to let him know that those were all in the <laughs> portal. <laughs> Waiting for him. All right. Okay. Thank, thank you. So. Thank you. And, yeah. and and I would say the same for the following thing as well. They were all notified. Okay. I have no more questions to deal with that. Unless Great. you can shed any more light that was some, something we should do, just to. I think in the future, just I'm sure Keith maybe has conversations with John and with Dan. Sometimes DEP will share those letters as a draft, as a courtesy, uh, with the communities in advance, and that might help eliminate 90% of what was on there the last time. Right. 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 We all learn. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right. Sure. I get it. Um, all right. Do you want so, to start talking yeah, about so, the... Absolutely. So we, um, we're here really gathered tonight to kind of give um, an update of where we're at in the process with the repairs at the plan and where we need to go forward, what the calendar will be like, what the funding sources will be like, um, and, and to capture... Uh, I think there's an, up, uh, an update on, on the assessment as well. Do, do you want to take it away from there or do you? However you guys want to handle yeah. this. I, had, I was prepared to try to do a, a brief five to ten minute kind of presentation on where things stood. That would be great. So, um, they might hedge off some of the bigger questions and mm -hmm. then obviously open it up to um, staff, the board, and the public to any questions uh, or a deeper dive in, in some of the issues. Yep. Uh, so with great. that, sure. yes, please. Please. Yeah, that'd be great. Brief, brief presentation. Sure. So there's a, uh, a handout tonight. There were 30 copies. Uh, it's, it's marked agenda for those in the public. Yep. Uh, there should be sufficient copies. James uh, uh, Rivers can, can give you one if you need one. Um, kind of two things to talk about tonight. One was just a, a quick recap on where we were at with the wastewater condition assessment and needs analysis project. I think we've kind of uh, slanged this one, the asset management mm -hmm. plan, uh, as things have unfolded, and also give you a brief update on where we believe things are with the secondary clarifier repair and our recommendations uh, for Deerfield to consider. So the first, um, we started off uh, last summer, uh, late July, early August, uh, with the uh, asset management plan. Um, had a six-month schedule in it. Uh, we had our first public informational meeting back in October. Uh, in the back of this handout is actually a copy of that presentation. Uh, I think it's good to be able to reference back uh, to where we were at two and a half months ago relative to where we are now. And things stand pretty much the same relative to the timeline and the capital plan. Um, for those that might not have been here or don't recall, we came up with a four-phase, 13-year implementation plan. 
uh, where phases one and three address the needs at the South Deerfield plant and phases two and four address the needs uh, at the old Deerfield plant. Uh, mixed in with uh, those treatment plan upgrades are, I guess, what we would refer to as an annual capital improvements plan for your collection system, uh, where you would likely allocate a certain dollar amount each year uh, to address fixing old pipes, structural defects, O&M needs, et cetera. And a lot of those surfaced in the recent phase two II study. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's where that's at. So in terms of the work remaining, um, Tony's got a, I guess what we're calling a, a pre-draft copy of the, the report for the asset management plan, um, heavy on appendices for those that would like to go back in and uh, read themselves to sleep at night. Um, <laughs> but um, we expect that that would be issued to the town in the next week or two at right. the most. Uh, we just weren't quite there tonight, but we wanted to show you in good faith that that, yep. uh, that paperweight is, uh, is there and ready. Great. Um, and then the next step beyond that would be your review, uh, any questions you may have, and then incorporation of those into a final report. So we're right on time in terms of where we're at with the six-month schedule. Um, you know, all things considered, um, you know, with some of the things that have come up along the way, um, kudos to you for keeping the ship uh, on path. Mm -hmm. Action items from that project uh, are really one. Um, we also drafted the USDA funding application following the October meeting, and that is also pretty much ready to go with whatever tweaks we make this evening relative to the, to the implementation concept. So we would ask you um, to consider whether it be this evening or as an action on behalf of the board to authorize us to submit the USDA application for the phase one project, which is the same as it was presented at the October uh, public info meeting it's about an $11.2 million upgrade. It addresses the needs at the South Deerfield plant that are of the highest importance as the staff and town together worked out those, uh, those priorities together um, in, in the months that preceded. So with that, I'm gonna turn the page and we can certainly come back to any mm -hmm. questions on this front. Uh, the secondary clarifier repair slash upgrade. Um, uh, just a quick brief history. Um, as you know, you have one secondary clarifier. It's a pretty unique situation, and um, anytime you're dealing with a process or an industry or manufacturing, one of anything is just Not a good. formula for something to go wrong. Mm -hmm. So you have had a um, you have had a failure of your clarifier mechanism. Uh, we keep knocking on wood here um, because there's different levels of failure that can occur, uh, but it's it's significant, especially given that you have one. Um, within the packet that's in here in the handout, uh, lower right-hand corners of the page is if you flip to page four of the handout, there's a, uh, again, I say the word brief, but a four-page memo that, uh, that we put together in advance of this evening, again, as a courtesy to the town. Uh, this wasn't a task we had been commissioned to do, but in yeah. the interest of trying to explore the options, Thank you. Uh, what were the alternatives uh, that were available? And essentially, we looked at three. We looked at... Um, kind of fixing or tuning up the existing mechanism in that one clarifier is alternative one. We looked at replacing in entirety that mechanism inside that existing clarifier. And we looked at the concept of advancing a part of the phase one upgrade by constructing the second clarifier uh, so that you would have your redundancy that way. Uh, what we did, uh, as it's shown in the memo, and you can look at this at your own convenience, is just try to prioritize all the different drivers cost, timeline, schedule, operations. And our recommendation is uh, alternative two of the complete replacement of the innards of the existing clarifier. And ultimately what that comes down to is it's the best balance of cost and a reasonable timeline, right? So as it stands right now, DEP in their letter that's also included in the handout said, okay, Deerfield, you have 90 days from the date of that letter, January 22nd, to fix that clarifier, to, to deal with that. Um, immediately upon receipt of that document, uh, we, through myself, have been in contact with Dan Krapaska. Dan is a peer of John, a more senior peer at DEP. Um, explained the situation to Dan that, hey, trying to get this thing done in the middle of the winter, you know, it's just not feasible. He said, I understand. What do you think a practical plan would be? And uh, we talked about a timeline where you'd have all of calendar year 19 to get that done. And I explained that subject to input from the town relative to um, appropriation, procurement, et cetera, 
uh, that that was probably the best case scenario. Um, nothing in writing. Uh, Dan responded verbally that uh, he believed that that plan would be favorably received by DEP. Generally what happens at this point is when DEP says in a letter, do this, and you say, I would like to do that, but my terms are a little different than your request, uh, likely what happens is DEP will agree with us uh, with the alternative plan, but issue it as a more formal consent order. Mm -hmm. So it would be an, a higher level of a unilateral action uh, on the part of DEP. I don't believe, um, again, subject to your input, um, I don't believe this is something that the town should shy away from. Um, it's not a matter of whether you're going to fix your clarifier or not. It's just a matter of um, how to make the, uh, the economics work uh, mm -hmm. in, in your cycle. Can I ask you a sure. question? Just to the best of your ability, could you explain what happened to this clarifier and since that damage has been done, how has it been functioning? Uh, maybe uh, what, has been, what, what steps have been taken to make it as, func as best functioning as possible and you know, what are the downsides of what's happening to it now? I think beyond divine intervention, Tony can probably give you his best take on, okay. on what's going on, but I think Keith is probably most well so, suited to answer that. Thanks, okay. Dave. So the clarifiers are prone to freezing on the surface. Yeah. Obviously, water freezes when it gets really cold, and the wind coming off the Deerfield River, uh, excuse me, the Connecticut River. forward into the mic? Sorry. People can hear you. Okay. So the clarifiers are prone to freezing, especially based on the, the basically the geography of where it's located coming off the Connecticut River. That clarifier gets hit with a decent amount of wind. So in the middle of the winter, the clarifier froze. The mechanism on top of the clarifier that removes floating debris continues to rotate with the mechanism on the bottom. So when the tank froze, the mechanism stopped at the top, the mechanism on the bottom kept moving, there you have your failure. failure. <clears throat> so in the interim to keep the clarifier functional and remove the debris on top of the tank, uh, Keith and his staff are manually removing the debris on top of the tank. It's very labor and time, in, time intensive. Now, it, I don't know, and, and perhaps you can shed some light on this. I mean, <clears throat> Is, do you think the failure partially could have been done because the material on that arm was so old? I mean, because we've had cold winters before, and it's, I believe this is one of the first times that that's happened. Uh, it, and I'm curious, this was the failure because it, it, the water froze that much or that the components were just weak and, and it's, gave out? It's a idea. combination. Oh, sorry. Actually, this is the second time it's happened. The first time was when Don was chief operator. Yeah. Um, and since then, Every year we have some type of water going into that tank to keep wake going across the surface of it, to keep yep. movement happening. Sure. When it gets really cold, we always do that. Um, and despite that, we, what happened was it was a super cold, super cold, single digit. Yep. And then we had a little power failure that was just long enough for the line to freeze. We had actually a sump pump and a two inch line pushing into the clarifier and when the, we had a power failure, it froze in the line so that, and then the sump pump burned up when it was re-energized, it couldn't pump, so that burned up. And the damage occurred despite our best efforts to, to prevent the freezing. It was just, okay. you know, we had some up here on the raceway, the outer perimeter of that, and it managed, we were breaking it up all week long and we were worried a little bit about the weekend, and sure enough, it, that happened. weekend it happened. It just grew enough that it became a problem. Okay. So, And just as a quick little follow-up to that, um, for power, emergency power there, you have to physically be there and turn it on. It's not an automatic like it yeah, should be. Yeah, that's the other mm -hmm. issue. So that is, pro that is another problem that yep. is addressed. But that, that came into play, which obviously helped this yeah. happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, had we had the proper generator, you know, then it might have kicked on and it might not have froze and it might not have broke. Right. But yeah. once again, that's just one more part of phase sure. one that has to be yeah. taken care Good of. Good point. I, yeah. That yeah. definitely was a contributing factor. Right. This yep. is not a problem that's unique to Deerfield. You have the same issues with clarifiers freezing in Old Deerfield. Hatfield has the same issues at their plant. Northfield has the same issues at their plant and they're all within. That's why I really 15, recommend a cover on the new clarifiers because right. we have leaves that get in there too and that's also a big problem. And algae. A cover. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I said it was also what I would really like to see ultimately as part of this upgrade are covers for the new clarifiers to prevent the freezing, to prevent the t constant algae 
uh, build up in the clarifier the during the summer. It, co it costs, Gary spends half a week, half of his week in there in the summertime. Um, and then the other issue in the fall is the leaves. Their leaves are being carried by the wind. They end up in the tank. The arm comes around when it's working properly and scoops them right into the little hopper there. And then that's reduced to a little four inch line oh. and it just plugs right up constantly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's really it's time for a new way for right. the clarifier. Yeah. Bruce, uh, you mentioned the cover. I know you have concern having to clean the air because we don't have uh, a lot of rags and clean periodically. Wouldn't the cover be prohibitive? Yeah, the cover wouldn't be a good idea until we had until the, the head put in. Yeah. yeah, that would be like a last thing to do, maybe if that's right. But yeah, with rags in the system, that would really be a bad thing, yeah. Yep. So, um, I just had a, I had a question. Um, on the, um, if we authorize you to negotiate with DEP on the consent order, um, do you think you would, you feel fairly comfortable that we would get a, a pretty good length of time to be able to deal with this reasonable time to repair, do the repair work? Yeah, I think the, the reasonable is maybe subjective to whomever <laughs> hears that word but i think the calendar year 2019 you know by december of of this year was floated to dep as an idea hey we gotta we've got to kind of narrow the dialogue between the town us and dep how does that sound and it was received favorably um do you think that um would you be able to get on this fairly quickly so that um, we would be able to include the consent order in the USDA application. And that's a very good point. We talked last time, and you clearly picked up on it, that any sort of regulatory action, uh, particularly in this case where it's going to happen anyways, helps dramatically with the level of grant funding right. in the USDA application. So, um, you know, we would literally do that tomorrow, and mm -hmm. subject to DEP's availability, I think it would be reasonable to expect that we would have that within a couple of weeks, maybe sooner. Um, yeah. Well, that, that all kind of lends toward, you know, my asking these questions about the consent order to begin with, because by reading it, if I was the person making the judgment of the assessment for the USDA, I'd say, well, this appears to be, the majority of this is clerical problems, you know, it's, it's oper operator error or stuff like that, you know, except for the freezing part. But after Keith's explanation, if that doesn't get deciphered out, you know, that uh, you see what I'm trying yeah, to say? Yeah, you've got to make it yeah, you're you're clear, clear and that, peel you know, off all, all of this other stuff that they made not, errors. Right, are not really the issue that uh, is at hand. No, but the consent clarifier. order would only apply would only to address the, the clarifier. It would only to do with the clarifier because everything because else everything is clear. Because everything else has already been rectified. Let's yes, yeah, that's, 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 that's what we want to. Well, that's it would not be a grant writing stretch to extend the clarifier problem to a headworks problem, right? I mean, we know that the amount of debris that makes its way through there probably results in additional torque. Uh, I think that's safe to sure. say. Yeah. Um, so that, that starts to bring in other elements of the phase one project. And believe me, anything mm -hmm. you know, that we can have that's in there that fortifies um, our request um, is, you know, it's a grant application. You do everything right. you can to make it look as rosy as possible. Absolutely. Well, we would want to, like I said, lobby Richie Neal's office and Jim McGovern's office because Richie Neal's the chair of the Ways and Means Committee, and Jim McGovern sits on the Ag Committee. So those would be two really good phone calls to the USDA as well. So having that information would be really important if we could get that relatively And they've fast. both historically been amazing relative to, mm -hmm. you know, infrastructure projects for communities, particularly in right. our region. Right. Dave, you, you spoke earlier about, uh, on this page four, about different options for this uh, clarifier. And, and maybe I'm just not seeing it, but is uh, what, what's the cost of just replacing, building a new clarifier adjacent to this one? So, so on Tony that. can get into the details here, but um, Kip, one of the challenges there, when you put the second clarifier in and you have two, mm -hmm. um, an integrated sludge handling system was part of that. Um, so we have close to $6 million tied to the two clarifiers the solids handling system, and when you when you open up a hole in the ground, at which time it would be that second clarifier, that's the time that you'd build the integrated pumping system, sludge handling system that went with it. Mm. Am I in the ballpark of what you? Okay. Five point eight million. 
And that's like over two years, right? And that's part that's of the, the that's the majority that's of, of the phase, phase one. one project, right? Yeah. right. Head, the biggest headworks, aspect. secondary clarifiers. Electric. We, yeah. we did have, I believe, one cover at the time because initially when we put this together, the thought was when the clarifier is empty, that would be the time to put the cover on it. And then the second cover was in phase two, but I mean, so yeah. there's flexibility um, in but, that. But, when you, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, I answer? just, yes. I, I, I'm, I'm reading through this just quickly and having, um, I, I'm not interested in alternative one, which is rehabbing the clarifier because then you have old parts and you're spending almost the same. For a little bit more money, we're, um, Getting an, you know, um, in alternative two, we're rehabbing with new parts. So, do you think we can do that in the six month to eight month period that we're allowed by DEP? Yeah, the the schedule is tight. I mean, mm -hmm. one of the it things is. that um, is is going to need to happen is you'll need to do some level of a special town meeting mm -hmm. um, in order to put that put that in place. But um, it's definitely achievable. I think the concern is that. We're on borrowed time with the clarifier. And so realistically, Kip, you brought up a question about the second clarifier. That's great from a redundant standpoint. That's the best alternative. I think Keith would agree. I think our concern is you're looking at a two plus year schedule to get that clarifier in the ground and integrate it before you've addressed the, the concern, which is you have a clarifier that has failed but could fail worse, I guess is the way to, mm -hmm. to, to so, tell it. If I understand Tony correctly, that cost of $5.4 million for the second clarifier was also all the integrated piping to not only connect that one, but to use the second one and everything else around there. Correct. Mm -hmm. But that would be, we'd have to do that like right now, and it would be a two-year process. Whereas if we did alternative two, you're talking about a million bucks. More or less. And just, just to clarify for the public, um, what we're talking about is taking all the guts out of the, our existing clarifier, putting in a temporary uh, inflatable tanks for, us, for our temporary tank uh, clarifiers, gutting our existing clarifier right down to the cement, fixing any cement, you know, just kind of making that, the guts of that, you know, the, the, the body that, that holds the clarifier in good shape and then putting all new parts, all new uh, clarifier parts into that system into that housing um, and they would match whatever we did in, in in the phase one which would be the new clarifier just for you know a lot so of people you, don't understand so you're saying you still end up with two clarifiers absolutely okay. yeah but just starting with that first one because we've got the we've got the base of it now already and right just, I was just thinking of doing it a little different but correct Eric, reversed yep just to say, would that constitute phase two of the phasing concept which is about a million dollars that's what phase two clarifier is was that what it was? The phase one was the five minutes to build the new phase two was to repair the other one. I'm just curious. I'm just, is it additional or not? Or phase three, sorry, phase three. Tony? I just didn't know if this was going to be additional on top of the phases or is this no. going to be one No, originally the uh, phase one would include the second new clarifier. Mm -hmm. uh, phase three would include the gutting and covering of the existing secondary clarifier. That was the original concept prior to the, the letter from DEP. Phase, so I guess what I'm saying is that, is that now we're sort of doing phase three first and then doing it? Not no, it, it is being switched around a little bit. It's, it's largely not a cost difference. Um, it's it's kind of sh a shuffling of the, the pieces of the, of the two clarifier for our project. So now we're saying phase 1A in concept is this gutting of the existing clarifier. Yeah, so it's not an additional cost. No, no, no. Switch, switch, I just, I it just there moving is, just No, there is, a, there, is, there is a little bit of a cost because we've got uh, these, sec these temporary clarifiers that have to come in. Sure. But okay. other than that, you're right, it'll be the same. Well, it's all grouped into phase one. The process, you know, with 980 here and there's a million on the other side, so it might be actually a little savings just when you're, depending on how you're doing the dollars. Yeah, we so hope, we hope. So, so well, hopefully you like can get a grant up. for it. Now, this makes me think that if we have the, when, if you rehab the original clarifier, where are you going to save some time in this is that you're not going to have to rerun all these pipes. How are you going to um, dis disconnect the current broken clarifier and go to a, a, a temporary clarifier while you're working on this? And if that same method couldn't be used by just constructing the new clarifier 
and just not putting all the underground pipes alongside it, wherever temporary plumbing you're going to do. We're going to have you to know? physically pump out of the aeration tanks into a new clarifier that's on the bed of a truck. On the bed of a truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're basically trailer units that tanks. you manifold them together. Yep. And it's a poor analogy, but it's you know yep. it's open heart surgery. I mean, there's yep. there's bypass that's going to be required. Um, you know, we were pleasantly surprised that the magnitude of the cost for the temporary system wasn't as bad as we thought it might be. So that's why this alternative two, again, the timeline kind of trumps the cost, but the costs really weren't different. So the timeline really kind of governed the recommendation. Again, not our decision, but a recommendation. Bruce, so, Bruce uh, had a, oh, go ahead. oh no, okay. Bruce, you had a question, Bruce? Yes. Uh, yes. No, not viable. No, just oh, those square, the square ones, you mean, the originals? No, the actual units that are set up in the back. Clarify your units. Aerators? These are not the spare aerators? Yes. Those are for the aeration system. They have nothing to do no, with... No. Okay, so can we just have consensus of everyone here that um, we're not really interested in alternative one, which is... Temporary cost of about 500000 rehab of about 250000 and basically you're ripping out um, some of the parts, but you are still having 40-year-old parts in some of the clarifier in the end. And just to clarify that, that means that we're taking the whole thing down and putting just some of the parts back. And then when we go and do this, we're going to rip it all back out in, in, in a year or so and rebuild the whole thing new again. So it temporarily fixes it in a shorter time span, but it really the 40 year old really steel and wastewater yeah. just shouldn't be put back in service. I, I, I'm really not interested right. in that. Right. But Eric? Eric? I, I, I'm just gonna agree with you guys for, for, for the crowd's sake. We're looking to do that work anyway, so why pay for it twice? Exactly. Yeah, that's, why I asked, that's why I posed the question. I just want to make right. sure it's not additional cost. No. We're looking to do them anyway down the road. Now, pricing's not in from wherever, but it's the same scope. So if we can do the same scope ahead, it's, again, it's just switching the cart in front of the horse one way or the other. Yep. It's just resequencing the work. It is a little bit more money, but we're getting all new parts. And it, it, I mean, to me, it's, it's just 40-year-old parts and, or 40-year-old parts. And a better technology for yes. clarifying. Yes. Much better. You're up upgrading the technology. Right. Yeah, okay. the way it does. So, so um, I don't think we're going to get the two-year window from DEP, right? For alternative three, we don't even have a two-year window. Even if, even no, if they no, gave it to no, us, even if they gave it to us, it. we're running then only on this broken clarifier. I would be very worried that, right? You know, something we'd be asking fail. for something that would be put us in a dangerous so, situation. So, so we're then really um, have alternative two, which is the temporary cost is roughly about seven hundred thousand, and new parts, et cetera, it's, runs about a million. And you think you can put that in, even if we appropriate the money to get you started on the design work and all that, that could go in the USDA grant, right? It's going to be in the USDA request. Right. So likely what's going to happen is if you move forward with phase 1A as recommended, you'll be doing it under some term, some sort of local funding finance mechanism. However, USDA in the past has on occasion allowed those elements to come into their project on the fly. It was part of the ask. It's part of the preliminary engineering report. Okay. And thus it's eligible. I so just wanted to make sure that gonna, we had the opportunity. We're still going to try to get a grant. Yes. We're going to yeah. try. Okay. <laughs> All right. just be a reverse grant. Skip. Skip. Yeah. I'm still a little bit unclear. But answer this question. Will we end up with a single clarifier or two clarifiers? Two. Two. After phase one is after, done. After we get moving on yep. this. But in the final analysis, we'll have two, we'll have two. clarifiers, yep. presumably side by side. Correct. Correct. Which is what we should be having. Okay. I mean, you my, need a backup. My backup question to that, I guess, or in addition to that, was what are the cost of these clarifiers? What would it cost to build a new clarifier? A lot. $5 million? That's, that's about what, what yeah, Tony five said. Eight. Five point five million, I guess. Five point eight. For a brand new one versus rebuilding the one we have is 
we're, and well, the, we're using the, the concrete. Yeah. You have to report new concrete or, or, or brand new one. No, it gives you the second clarifier plus the pumping system slash solids handling components that, that would go with it. Yeah, so they, with cover the two. on one of them and a cover, and cover. on one. Hopefully so what's, one the, what's the existing clarifier going to cost the repo? If the new one is going to be five and a half million? We're about a, what, a million, right? About what a million. About, about, a million. million. Yeah. about a million. So total then is six, seven million dollars for, mm -hmm. for two clarifiers. Correct. Bruce. Uh, Keith, if you tell us there's an existing clarifier around the next to it is a rectangular Two. concrete. Mm -hmm. Small rectangular. Yeah. Small tank filled with water. Well, partially filled with water. Uh, now that's frozen, but right. yeah. Uh, yep. That, so when it was originally designed in 1970, there was only one clarifier design. Yes. 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 And the addition tank was well, when they originally designed the plant, they designed it with the two rectangulars, but those needed to both be in service. So essentially, it was like having a single clarifier. That was not performing up to snuff. So in the late 1980s, they added the circular, the yeah. door Oliver. And we did get a grant for that. So the town outlaid the money for that. It was yeah. about I, maybe. I, I was confused because I thought the circular was probably really Back then, it was under 2 million, I think, under 2 million to I, do that. I wasn't here then. To do that. <laughs> and then, you know, we got a grant. For that. So the very thing that clarified is really is just, uh, just a piece of concrete. Yeah, that's it. Correct. Yeah. Not no, usable. That's the truth. Well, if, is the new clarifier or the rebuilt one going to be any larger or handle any more capacity than what we currently have? It doesn't need to. It doesn't need to. No. So that, that begs the question as to however big this portable clarifier is going to be in the trucks, couldn't we just build a smaller clarifier off to the side that would work as well and use it temporarily and then while we're rebuilding the new one and just always keep that smaller one as a backup in case you had to replace this in 40 years. Because I, I guess I'm saying now we're talking about spending six million dollars do for that. two big clarifiers because we should have a backup but yet the last one's been there for 40 something years. You know, I don't, I don't know if that's very wise. No, the last one's only been there since the 80s. I don't, I don't think that you can 82. do a smaller backup, 82. can you? They won't well, authorize that. Maybe that's 40 that. years. Yeah. Well, that's right. <laughs> it's it's old. Old. <laughs> 30 years, anyway. Early 80s, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I, I think that's extremely wise to have a backup. Don't get yes. me wrong. But if well, one is going to be really what we need, we're spending a lot of money just to have a backup. You know? How you ended up with one to begin with, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, this is... That's this is be, this is in. beyond unique, um, and it's, you know, if things went wrong, um, you'd be on the wrong side of the standard of care having one secondary clarifier long term, from an environmental standpoint. Well, I'm not necessarily saying having just one, but build a smaller one. Yeah, that, no. it, clarifiers are kind of like sneakers. You can't really have like a size 11 and a size six. It, they you just would don't be work. violating permit all the time with a smaller one. It would be overloaded. If you had to use it but for if you, backup. But if you're taking a, a temporary one that's much smaller anyway. You're looking at using the temporary in a very narrow time lens, though, Kip. The, the, the challenge is. Right? And there's no. No, not even. I mean, Although. you're talking about using that for a couple of months. Oh, um, hopefully. Yeah. So you're going to be able to rebuild I mean, the other one? The reality one in a is, of yeah, let's be honest, I mean, procurement, okay. shop okay. drawings. Okay. You know, there's a lot of that year that isn't construction. Okay. You know, yeah. construction itself, we're probably looking at a couple, you know, eight, eight to 12 weeks. Yeah. Okay. Maybe less. Hopefully. All right. Plus, there's really no guarantee how the small temporary one will perform. We might still end up violating permit while it's in service. I you see. know, there's no, especially now with the flow we're getting from all this rain. It's, it's a lot of rain. Enormous. You know, sure. again, not to harp on it, but some of the decisions that you're being asked to make with the residents, I don't believe you can make those until you figure out what the grant commitment right. might be. Right. right? That kind of sets everything in motion and. Well, we said from the get-go, if we don't get a grant, I think we're looking at a, an alternative timeline for some of the upgrades, if, if not right. the majority. Well, that's, so. that's the whole thing. I mean, if we don't get the grant, we still have the problem to deal with. You can deal with this million-dollar problem with the resources that Deerfield has. Yes. I'm right. very confident in that. Yeah. Um, it, it would be great if we can get the grant and roll that in. Yeah. But we're we're like really not in a good spot relative exactly. to, to meet and permit with mm -hmm. what we have. So right you now. can get started and then the USDA grant, if it comes through, can be paid back. Possibly. The, possibly. They've, they've shown that precedent in the past. Um, I mean, right now, you know, the whole <coughs> entity is on furlough. So, um, right. right. You know, they can't do anything right now. 
Right. But the consent letter from DEP would be proof of an emergency consent, situation. I'm confident that that consent letter, if it turns into a consent order. Builds our order, story. Those are, yeah. those are, those are aces for sure. Uh, uh, Eric had a question and then skip. Okay. Um, well, I, well, obviously, we all agree with the scope, or at least I think we'll also agree with the scope and what we need or what we'd like to have. My, my, my only question, or my, my biggest concern, obviously, being a small town with limited users and also a sewer payer, mm -hmm. right, um, and on the sewer system, the cost, how are the costs developed? How, how did you guys come up with the dollar figures when you're doing your, your, uh, your estimates? So, you know, we did the asset management plan. We developed a preliminary opinion of probable cost. Um, you know, it's a pre-design cost estimate, uh, both for the, the bigger phase one as well as the smaller phase 1A. Um, generally speaking, when you get to a certain percentage complete in design, whether it be 50% or 75%, you can kind of fine tune the cost estimate line by line. Uh, with what's included as well as soft costs. Right now, it's a budgetary number, and the goal there is to arm you with a figure that you can use for budget planning purposes, you know, special town meeting, warrant article, et cetera. So, so these aren't based off of any type of estimated quantities or, or anything of that nature? No, I think, that, you know, honestly, to, to answer your question, it's based on, you know, us having completed similar aspects or elements of these projects at other treatment plants, looking at bids from other treatment plants that we might not have even worked on and just kind of having a sense with manufacturers as to what their costs are and, and, and rough costs from contractors. I think the danger sometimes in a smaller project is for contractors, there's less interest. There's less things to mark up. There's less things to, uh, for them to be whole. So we believe that we're appropriately conservative at this point in the, in the project scoping sequence. The compressed schedule. I would agree with the conservative number. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so if you're looking for a grant and they come in, I'm, I'm hoping it's extremely conservative based on what, you know, my experience. So that's why I asked the question. I was hoping it wasn't based on any, any hard quantities or estimated quantities. No, I think. Obviously, South Deer dealing with, you know, $28 million plus whatever interest, it was, it was, a, it was a big nut. It is. It is. And I mean, it the is. whole idea is to try and get it to the point where we can check and see where the, what we can get for a grant and then have these designs done so we can really look at, you know, what we're using for parts, are we getting, you know, good deals and fine tune that number down as much as we can. I, th I think the, that's the important element, Trevor, is that generally speaking, as things have evolved, even from years ago, the numbers are overall heading in the right direction. I mean, sometimes you're guilty of things snowballing as you move along. We'd rather right. start conservative and come backwards. Right, so. We'll leave the adjectives out of the conservative for now, <laughs> extremely or moderately or something, but it's conservative. Bruce? Oh, and Skip was first. We're hoping to roll that grant. Um, it's we're, part of the initial application. Yeah, you right now. It, we may not get a grant for it, but we're hoping that it. The town's probably going to end up having to fund this ahead yeah, of time. The, front load this. So we're going to fund it through and, taxation. And that well, you sewer users fees and taxation. Yeah, sewer users. If you get if you get no grant, correct. If we get no if you grant, get no grant. We'll probably borrow if we have to, Bruce. We would probably borrow a million dollars. Yeah. Yep. And um, you know, the idea is to keep moving on this because it, it would cost us money if we get fined. If the if the clarifier fails. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. We would probably borrow money. We're still we're still working out that, and uh, we'll have a second meeting um, coming up, hopefully, with uh, a few of the players to kind of get that that calendar of well, payment. Well, um, every day we wait. It's a day longer than less that we have to, to uh, work. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Andrea's going to tell you that he needs to start designing this. We know that. We know. Yeah. Um, we wouldn't want to use the whole stabilization fund anyway. It's not going to be available till right. you know certification like September, October anyway, but you wouldn't want to use so it. Just so. sorry. No, no, no. no. I just, that's why we'd probably borrow the money and when ask you to get going. On, on page three in the handout, the, the red page three, there's a bar chart. These were projected impacts to 
the household on a monthly basis for the entirety of the phase one upgrade, which is roughly $11.2 million. Under the first blue bar, if you didn't receive any grants and you conventionally financed a million dollars over 20 years at 4% interest rate, I think based on some information that was shared with me earlier this evening that that may even be very conservative. You were looking at about a $28 increase per month per household for 11.2 million. So just take 10% of that. I think it's about three bucks a month per household for a million dollar project based on the debt service for that. So that initial million dollar project, I, I don't think it's, it's not $300 per year. It's, uh, it, it should be about 40 bucks a year. Bruce, um, we're going to hand out uh, a piece of paper done by Barbara Hancock. Mm -hmm. Property tax impact calculator. It's based on uh, $250,000, which would be the town total. Correct. It says the average single family resident is $291,083. The tax bill impact is $21. Right. That's for 25% of a million. That's not a finance. That's what we're going to hand out. Right, but that, that, that's taxation. That's a, that's, a, that's a one time payment if you didn't bond it or finance it. Yeah. Right. That's not every year, that's one time payment. One time payment? Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's a good question, though. That would have scared me, too. Yeah. <laughs> no, skip. Sorry. So I just want to understand what the recommendation that David, your group, is making. And as I understand it, it's as quickly as possible get in a temporary clarifier and then again as quickly as possible rebuild the existing clarifier and once that's rebuilt to reconnect that and get rid of the temporary clarifier and then move forward with the project. Phase one, yep. Phase one. I think that was a very well summarized uh, iteration of, 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 I think the only word that Tony just mentioned, replace as opposed to rebuild. Yeah. So. Replace which? Re other, replace other the, exi the existing mechanism and the existing clarifier. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Correct. Take the, round, the, the guts. The guts. big round thing and we're yeah. going to put all the That's right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. We're keeping the round thing. You're going to get an yeah. awesome yeah. circle when you're done. Maybe it a little yeah. bit. <laughs> Fix yeah, up we, this cement. I think there is consensus that we do, do not want to um, rebuild, rebuild and rehab. And then have to rip out again. Yeah. That's why I said big round thing. Yes. I, I, I think I heard this from Kevin, and you can correct me if I'm wrong. Now, what, what this would be is you would have somebody come in and they'd take a lot of measurements and basically build this ahead of time and come in and assemble it. So Depending on which one you go. Mission? Is it mission? No, this would be, quite honestly, as soon as you say go and the appropriations in place, you do a pre procurement. So you'd solicit under Chapter 30B. Uh, through manufacturers interested in providing a replacement mechanism. This is very common, you know, diameter of clarifier, you yeah. know, the geometry of the clarifier. Uh, you then establish a committee to pre-select uh, the equipment that you want, the manufacturer you want, and then the general contractor at general bid has to carry that manufacturer. And there's no guesswork. The last thing we want to do is open bids and have a big spread in the two bids and then right. bite our fingernails off waiting for the general contractor to tell us which piece of garbage he included in his bid yeah. for the new clarifier. So yeah, no, I don't want that. Um, it's not the same application as we did look initially at uh, an outfit that uh, that either Kevin or Keith, yeah, Keith had, had located Keith, 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 uh, a manufacturer that would do the rebuild, so kind of rebuild the C-3PO kind of concept. But I think we've agreed that you're still left with a whole heck of a lot of steel and mechanics that are 40 years old sure. going back underwater that, honestly, yeah. the worst time thing you can do with a clarifier is when you take it down Sometimes when you fill it back up, things don't work. I mean, mm -hmm. you, you expose that air water interface yep. um, and change it. Oh. The rust that was holding things together is, uh, is gone. Yeah. No, Sorry I'm for the Star interested. Wars reference there. But, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not interested. Yes. If um, the state goes along with this one year plan by the end of this year to, to go the way you're talking, but something horrific happens and we fail to do it, what happens by the end of the year? Probably write another letter, <coughs> explain the horrific it? incident, and hope for. Yeah, usually the usually the fines come when there's no act of good faith. I mean, yeah. 
boy, act of God or something crazy happens, um, generally speaking, the regulators will work with you. If we completely ignored the situation, said what we were going to do and didn't do it and didn't even try, that's when, yeah. that's when money gets involved. Yeah. yeah. Good faith, usually positive momentum. You know, the, the folks that run DP Western Region live here too. So they, they get what, what it's like to be with. from Western Mass. Yeah. yeah. I only ask that because it sounds like a very serious thing. I would hope that there would be good faith, but sometimes um, <clears throat> terrible things happen you don't plan for, and uh, uh, I, I guess you just have to think well, ahead. Well, I think I w we're going to make an effort to make a decision, and w that means we're going to schedule a town meeting because we have to have authorization for money. Mm -hmm. um, I think our decision would make it. Um, reasonable for David to and his group to continue to work um, given our timeline. So uh, hopefully people would come out and support this alternative as reasonable and um, at the special town meeting and so we'd move forward. Um, obviously as soon as we get the consent letter um, we would include it in the packet. Um, we're going to lobby very very hard with our congressional delegation and make sure that we have a really good chance of getting the grant. You're picking up on my concern. It's a, there's a mechanical things that could go wrong. Or right. Well, I mean, we could in. have but, a flood every, any we, time. We don't we'll wash it down the river. If we don't get approval at the time right. meeting, we've already said launch it, right? <laughs> well, so, I mean, if we get a grant, yeah. we're moving forward anyway. I understand. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not trying to pick it to death, but. But the special town meeting meeting would authorize money that would pay mm -hmm. to move forward. If we get the grant, which we should have some indication, David, did you say by June? I would hope that June is the latest. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. I would love to be in a situation where, assuming the, the furlough ended soon, that by March, April, we would have some indication so that you could consider if you were so inclined to you know, some level of consideration at the warrant for mm -hmm. annual town meeting. Um, we have to just play it out, see what happens. Mm -hmm. And our CS Massachusetts is open um, until the end of the week. So I'm going down. I have a meeting tomorrow. We'll, we'll the start. Town, but if the town failed to approve it. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I doubt it. But, uh, it's, it's happening. Well, yeah. Yeah. well, I'm sure it's a big chunk of money. And if, if yep. we, th we would have to pay the fines then. It won't, it won't to. come to that. I, I mean, I, I, I would hope not, but that's yep. a waste of money. We're not replacing mm -hmm. anything. And we need to educate our, our residents and <laughs> yes. our users. This I mean, it's very really important to do that. And what, but I mean, I think, I think everyone understands that you can't run the town on just taxpayer dollars. We hustle money constantly. We are constantly getting grants and constantly looking for ways to finance things. So this is no different. I mean, we just have to hustle. That's part of our job. On the mechanical side of it, uh, as far as this type of construction, are there examples of things that have gone wrong, or are there areas that are uh, more of a concern, or is this pretty standard uh, practice like <coughs> building a house? Uh, no, this, this is relatively cut and dry. I think the, the biggest variable or anticipated roadblock would be exactly what the interior of the concrete looks like. There may have to be some minor concrete repair that would be that would be done it wouldn't be structural per se it would be just to make it smoother mm -hmm. uh, and make the clarifier mechanism work more efficiently well, we, and i would that's pretty would, typical I mean, there, this might be for Tony. I mean there's a lot of good uh, epoxy products on the market i mean would it make sense just to line this anyways because i've seen that concrete or at least what i could see and it's it's rather the surface is rather tattered I mean, Tony can take his own take on this too, but uh, sometimes in that case, Kip, during the bid, we include an alternate. So you have a predetermined price to add an epoxy layer, and based mm -hmm. on the magnitude of the bids, uh, you may or may, may or not may or may not be able to include that as an item of work, depending on budget, et cetera. Um, but if it it's not um, the epoxy, you know, can be good. It, I've seen it go really wrong too. Yeah, I was going to say uh, that. The pre-application and the conditions aren't good. Um, Sometimes that epoxy requires special conditions for like up to 56 days oh, before the clarifier the goes in. So one downside might be, Fine. depending on when the product's going to arrive and how much fall is left, um, getting that put back into service, it'll just be half the, one of those things we weigh the pros and cons. 
But if we have a price and we're in really good shape, we have a discussion with the EP at that point. Yep. Hey, this is I, what we're thinking. What if what if it goes another two months? And I and I bring that concern up because I, I have seen the surface of that concrete, and I, I agree to you know just replace parts is not the best way to go. I think replacing all of the parts is good. But as you know, that concrete is an important part of that too. Mm -hmm. No doubt. Uh, so you know, I don't know all of the things that are out there. I don't know if, if there's a, a concrete product like a spray on gunite that works better than the epoxies or, or the companies excuse me, I'm sorry. The companies that do that type of work, they usually include concrete repair as needed yeah. in their in the package. When they come, if you choose them, they give you a, a price and a comprehensive map of what they're going to do and usually it's everything mechanical plus brand new weirs plus any concrete work that needs to be done is included in their price well i, I just the norm i just want to make sure that yeah. that gets looked at too because it's I, a good yeah, question sure it does make sense definitely. i think bid alternates is probably the safest way yep. to deal with it yep then you can make the decision sure yeah. um bruce i think had a do you have a question bruce, bruce still yeah uh i know several times over the last year so mentioned that those walls on the tank need to be raised. I'm assuming that, unfortunately, that's million dollars probably does not include doing something like that. That's correct. That's a good question. I don't know. You, well, did you talk about for flood, you mean? or? Yes. We were talking about resiliency. Uh, uh, I guess they almost went back. I guess the same uh, applies up to the old Deerfield uh, plant when we get up there. So. And I don't know whether it's fact or fiction, fiction, but I know that it had been mentioned that the walls need to be raised. The, the, the tanks at the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant, uh, the current top of concrete wall is below the 100-year flood elevation. So if it does breach the, there's a, a dike basically along the river, if the water does get just above that, it will breach the tank walls and go above the tanks. At that point, the treatment plant will be non-functional. So the fix for that is raising the walls? Or maybe trying to put some sort of a raise the berm. There's, there's several options. It's actually discussed in the it's, USDA. It's discussed. We carried you know, an allowance for resiliency. I'll say that depending on the funding source, some funding entities require that it be addressed. Others don't. I think we just, because that doesn't necessarily, that element doesn't always have a a great return on investment. We just have to be wise with where we choose to make those resiliency improvements. But no, it is not. We're not planning on raising the walls of that existing clarifier we as could, part of this phase. Um, we could amend our MVP plan and make that part of our MVP resiliency. Go ahead. So the the new clarifier, the walls will be above the hundred-year flood. As, oh, as that one's clarifier. being built. Okay. Do you, do you foresee, I don't know if this is just function, but uh, do you foresee the new clarifier being the primary once everything's up and done and the old, the rebuilt one, the secondary, or I don't know how that's, it works? That's a total operations. He could decide to run both clarifiers. He can run one I clarifier. See. I see. Yeah, I would, uh, right now, as things are, I would leave one in service, and then I would alternate them. To, to use it. So yes. it's not just sitting there. Constantly yep. use them. Gotcha. And okay. Yeah. I don't know how that worked. The plan in phase one is that there will be a cover on one, so that clarifier would be the clarifier that's used in the winter time. Gotcha. Okay. We'll see what we can do to get both covers on. Yeah. yeah. We heard that. Be a good idea. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> smart with the head work. This is it's 60 feet across. Is that what the new one's going to no, be? 60 across? feet internal. Then you've got an outside lawner. It's roughly 65 feet total. Okay. Um, can we make a decision? Are there any other questions in the Are there any other questions in the audience that anybody has? Not where we are at the process right now? You know, funding we're still working on. I think the only not question but point I make is that <clears throat> the town of Deerfield truly has no choice about this. We're we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. We need to fix it. Yep. We need to rely on experts to know the best way to do it. There are some different alternative ways of doing it, which I think has been kicked around. But I think that's the message going forward that needs to be really instilled upon the whole town, is that there's no real choice about this. It needs to be done, and our best option is to do the best way we can with the best quality, because it's a long-term. It is, long-term investment. Yep. yep. One thing that I'm not real clear on, and it may be Brenda or Carolyn or somebody, but I know I'm going to get a lot of questions about this. When we talk about the, having a, 
an article at special town meeting to raise the fund. I know it's going to come up about everybody who doesn't use the sewer system. Mm -hmm. So how do, how do we explain if that if we borrow a million dollars, what portion is paid by all the taxpayers? I understand it's supposed to be 25 percent, but if the mm -hmm. town votes to spend this million dollars, do we actually only vote to spend? 250,000 and the rest of it is coming up from reserves well, or is the, the law here. or is the financing going to be against whatever the users yes. pay back? So a mixture of both from what I understand is that um, for this first phase here, the um, a million dollars that we would have a warrant article and 20 and 75% would be paid by the users. We would probably go out and get a temporary um, loan like a ban, pay the interest on that, which we could pay um, out of sewer users and then 25%. Uh, right. Skip. That's what I'm hoping for. But Skip yeah. may have, he's done some research on this. The, so. the loan is, it, it's a loan that the town is going to take. And the question isn't whether the town is obligated, but it's where's the money to pay back the loan coming from? Right. And we're talking, at least at this point in time, I guess, 75% of that payment, whatever it is, will come from the sewer users. 25% of the payment will come from everyone in town. Just as we paid for the running of the police department. Which includes so, the sewer but Which, mm -hmm. includes again which does again include the sewer users. I, I know it's been a while since I did it and I know that we raised that fee, but will that fee increase cover the cost of just repaying this versus mm -hmm are we going to yet have to raise that sewer fee once again to cover this cost? You know, and, and this is just the first million dollars of dealing with this. I think we're talking a million dollars or a million and a half, I think it's pretty safe that... Oh, users. But yeah. Yeah. it certainly is going to, it's going to be raised when we talk about the entire project 13 I, years from now. Right, yes. but I, I, I guess what I'm trying to wrap my head around is that... Is that rate going to keep going yeah, up? When, when people say to me, geez, my sewer bill is now $600, and now to pay back this loan, it's going to go up another $200, and now my property taxes are going to go up another $50, you know, and this is just... For Kip, this. I think the big, best thing to think about is that we need to take one step at a time. We are intending to get the USDA grant, which would stabilize the rates at pretty much the same rate, okay? If we don't get the rate, this will have a huge impact on our timetable and our 13-year no, plan. I get it. What I, what I just didn't know is how to explain it to people when they ask me about it because, you know... We can only do the, one step at a time. We, we won't well, be able to tell people this, the accurate amount right of here. money until um, we find out whether we get a grant or not. If we get a grant, it won't, it really won't. If we it got 70, really if we got like the, all the stars aligned and we got 75% grant, we don't really have to move it that much. If, you know, and it just kind of. I would say it's reasonable to get the 45% the grant, which would go from $64 a month to $67 a month average well, the for reason, the user. The reason but, I ask this, Carol, is because I, as important as it is to discuss the process to get this fixed, which needs to get done, you have to also keep in mind know. that mm -hmm. two-thirds of these people don't use this. And it's, I think for this to be successful, we have to have a good answer for those two-thirds of the people. You know? and, and that's a, a big Well, we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice to the clarifier, so that's, that's why we're moving. No, you know, I, I know, but Kip, I don't have the answer for you because... Town hall bathrooms to are always them. open. Uh, when the town building is open. So if anybody <laughs> needs to come and use the restroom. Yeah, well, <laughs> what I'm saying is we don't have, we don't know the answer. And if we don't get a grant or we only get part of a grant, then we have to adapt the timeline and, that, and what we actually do. And that will have an impact because the phone calls I get, just like you, people are not even on the system and they feel like, why should I have to pay? I have to pay thousands of dollars for a septic system. I agree, but this is for the benefit of the town, I'm, I'm not, and we need point. not I'm, even to. My, just like we would, would adjust. Point, we would adjust. Well, my, my point is, and I'm not saying that it's not important, but I'm just saying it's another element that's just as important as these mm -hmm. things. 
is how do we got to make sure that we can sell this to these folks, and that's what I'm trying. Well, to we can't. We don't. We'll not have an answer immediately, other than that's that we're going to. I don't think that's a good. You know. Well, we'll get there. I'm sorry, well, Kim. That has answers. kept us from doing anything for years. Right. We're, we're moving forward stop. with a clarifier, right. and that is a million dollar right. cost, you're and that can be a point. Let's, let's move on. Uh, we right. can. We can. Yeah, go just just to go on for for to answer the question as far as the users are concerned. Uh, you can expect just like anything else, just like your standard taxes, they're, they're going to continue to go up. Sure. I mean, because nothing is getting cheaper from year to year to year. Yes. Our O&M is basically where majority of your money goes to as far as your sewer rate goes. That in turn, the polymer is going to cost more money. This is going to cost more money. The repair is going to cost Sludge more money. Hauling. Sludge hauling is going to cost more money. So all these things costing more money is obviously just going to go ahead and take that part of the users that you might as well expect is going to raise from year to year to year. That the years of 15 or 20 years ago where it would go up, it would go down, it would go down, it would go down, and it would go up a little bit, those days are over, and that's why we're in the position we're in right now. Sure. I get that. And, and just to follow up on that, you budgeted $14,000 for repairs, and what, did you, what are you spending now, like $40,000? Uh, right now, I have let's this see, year. Uh, I actually I budgeted 35 for repair and I'm already at 51,000 and I'm only six months through the year. So, so far we've spent $51,000 band-aiding the plant. Bruce. Uh, but it, amounts to, it, it can be so, okay? First off, you three are the town leaders. If you're going to be negative about it, then you're not going to sell anything. You have got to be positive about it. You've got to reinforce that we are going to get the wall. To reinforce it. Fines will be the inevitable conclusion. But the first thing is you have to be the salesman and be positive about what you're selling, not negative. Well, I can and, do that. And, it, and it's money wasted to keep re band aiding. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, the fifty thousand, the fifty thousand dollar repair job could pay for the engineering to move forward. And so, I mean, to me, that's wasting money. Just like reusing some of the 40-year-old parts. We I need to move forward. That, need yeah. Yeah. We'll have some okay. good, good points. We'll have okay. No doubt the town people will follow us here. So um, then I guess I would want us to vote to make sure that um, David has a clear message that we would authorize him to negotiate with DEP to get um, extension on uh, this cons potential consent order. You second that motion. I agree. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so Who's taking I, I also would like to make sure that it's a clear message that we are moving ahead one way or the other. So um, I know we don't have any money at this point, but we will schedule a town like meeting, and I'm hoping that you would be willing to, con you know, to move on ahead with it, some of the engineering so that we could, once we schedule the town meeting in February, we could move forward in a relatively quick period of time. Of course, the town's been a good partner. And, and um, also that we would get this USDA grant filed. As soon as we get filed. that, hopefully consent order back from DEP you should be ready to go. There. So you're gonna start working on this tomorrow, right? Uh, uh, we'll start working on okay. this tomorrow. Eric has a question. I just have one more final question. I know you sure. said it's good nighttime reading, but the report you have there, could that be made available to the townspeople? Yes. I th yes, as soon as it's done. He's got a preliminary draft now. I'd, I'd like this. You have a PDF. It should be electronic. Yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah. Definitely yeah. PDF. <laughs> it's, uh, the, the file size may the necessitate it. that we put a Dropbox link together. So 50000 like. a copy if you want to pick up one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get this paid for in no time. For a fee. <laughs> We will. We'll definitely. As soon as we so, can. Uh, so, David, do you feel you want us to take a vote on the going ahead and asking you to start working on the conceptual design? No, I don't. I don't think you need to put yourselves in that position. I think. Yeah, we'll we've got our marching orders out. for tonight. Yep. Okay. You meet regularly. We'll right. we'll keep the process moving. Yeah. Um, and so I just want to make sure that we, as a board, um, we're on board to ask Wendy to schedule a special town meeting. Yes, I think she's working on two dates, and Diana is working on either the. It's on the agenda for Wednesday. Okay, perfect. Yep. Uh, Bruce? What about, um, is it possible to bury, uh, have this perfect come to this uh, town meeting? Because he could probably do the one 
Explaining, yes. Explaining it would be grateful. Be happy to do it. Great, thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. Plus he's a better salesman than most of us. He is. <laughs> okay. Great. Is there any thank other questions? Thank you, everybody, for coming. Yes, I want, I want to thank very, David and your team. You guys have, have been doing a great job, and I really appreciate um, all the work you're doing. To help us make a decision. Thank so you, thank Board you of everyone. Selectmen. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I know this is like Christmas in uh, January for you, right? <laughs> thank We're you. moving oh, forward. I make a motion so to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you.